Hello and welcome. This is SAP Cloud Platform Professional Development course. In this course, our focus will be understanding how we work with cloud platform. And in cloud platform, we are going to focus our attention on Cloud Foundry. How as a developer or as an architect or as a DevOps consultant, you will be working with Cloud Foundry and apps development and a lot of things which touch Cloud Foundry when we go for cloud native development and also while creating side-by-side -side apps when we have a cloud deployment with Cloud Foundry. Now, first we will start with Cloud Foundry. We will try to understand basics, what it is, how to work with it, and we will focus our attention on app development, trying to push application to Cloud Foundry, what are different scenarios we have, what are parameters we can pass, how can we scale up down our application, what are the different build packs it has to offer. We will be focusing our attention on two major Cloud Foundry provider. One is Pivotal Cloud Foundry and also SAP Cloud Foundry. Our focus will be more on SAP Cloud Foundry. Now, the major reason for also covering Pivotal Cloud Foundry is that when you go for learning Cloud Foundry with your free trial account, then there are a lot of features which you will not find in SAP Cloud Platform. So for learning, you can also experiment those features in Pivotal Cloud Foundry. And if you are upgrading your SAP Cloud Foundry, you will also get those features. But our primary focus on is when you try to learn Cloud Foundry with a trial account, then what are the scope or things which you can perform? So certain services like having a database or adding a message broker, so all that, we will try to cover or use Pivotal Cloud Foundry, but our focus here will be the SAP Cloud Foundry. And also we will cover how you can also use Neo. And when we talk about Neo, this is the Neo account, which we have already acquainted or familiar with while we work with WebID or we have worked with Cloud Platform Mobile Development or Workflow. So we will be also seeing a lot of Neo as well in this course. Now, this is about where we are going to deploy our application. But inside the application, we focus to Spring Boot. Now Spring Boot is a Java based framework and we will start from very basic. We will keep the application syntax very basic. So if you are not familiar with Spring related framework, then you can still catch and understand how to develop applications in Spring Boot. Now this application will act as a side-by-side -side application. So you have your existing SAP Cloud Platform setup. If you want to introduce any custom feature, you will be using Spring and create application and put in the Cloud Foundry. So that's how you can have different application if you have custom requirement for your customers or yourself. Now, once we understand Spring Boot, then we focus our attention on YAML files because YAML are going to play an important role in creating an environment for our application to run. So we'll drill down into what are the options we have. Many times people don't cover YAML files, but as a developer, you will require the need to use multiple syntaxes of YAML file. And this syntax will not only be utilized while creating this kind of application of Spring Boot, but also when you work with Docker or Kubernete, you will use YAML descriptor file to create Docker images. Now, once you have understood how to work with YAML file, then we will cover how you can use Docker. If you have not yet worked with Docker, then don't worry because we are going to start from very basic. We will create simple Docker images and try to add our application instance inside the Docker image and push it to the Cloud Foundry. And we will see how we can utilize Docker image for development, how it can benefit us. Because if we use Docker, then we don't have to set the development environment and we can basically manage DevOps very easily. So once it is done, then we focus our attention on microservice and create application to demonstrate the microservice capability. We'll go deep and try to understand it more properly by building application. In the process, we are also going to cover S4 HANA SDK and we will develop application of S4 HANA SDK. Now, once we have covered all that, we will also require to learn how we can automate 
the CI-CD. What is CI-CD? How can I do CI, which is continuous integration, and CD, continuous delivery, in my project? How can I bring automation while managing or developing a project? So we will be using Jenkins and create pipelines for CI-CD based activities. And if you have no idea about how that is done, then don't get afraid. We will start from very basics and we will try to keep the use cases simple for you to understand and bring you to medium and advanced level. So once we have worked with CI-CD pipeline creation and all that setup, then you have a good exposure and strong foundation on working with cloud platform, create your own side-by-side -side application parallel to cloud platform. Within the process, we will understand how the setup actually will be in enterprises and what your role will be and what are the scenarios will be. And at the end, we will also try to understand how we can provide security to our cloud-based application and also how we can monitor their performance and statistics. So this is all packed in this course. Our focus here is to keep all the parts simple to understand for beginner and take you to intermediate and advanced level. And we will be making all that with simple, simple example. So I hope that you will learn a lot in this course. So let's start with the course and I will see you in this course.